Antique Arms Show 2017 in Las Vegas, and we're talking to Don Bolsey. How you doing, brother? All right. Good, good. Um, just couldn't help, obviously couldn't help your, but notice your table, and uh, you are the maker of your knives. You're not just simply out here selling. And uh, so, Don, what uh, originally got you into uh, into blade making? Well, I spent about the last 50 years in martial arts, and had a preference for the Japanese style and all. Started collecting Japanese swords years ago and figured out real quick that my pocketbook wasn't deep enough for the kind of pieces that I wanted. Right. So I thought, maybe I can make some of them. What style of martial arts uh, do you train? Uh, Aikido and Taekwondo and then did some cage fighting. Okay. But, uh, that was what got me interested and I just started building pieces and over the years I think I've gotten a little better at it. Yeah. Now, now, you said you did some cage fighting. You must have been a winner most of the time because your neck isn't all sideways. <laughs> now, I did all right. There you go. So wh about what year, what time period did you start making? Did you decide uh, to start 1990. making? 1990. 1990. Yeah. Um, when you were buying Japanese blades, were they actual Japanese manufactured blades or ancient blades? or were they, they were antique blades. They were antique yeah. Japanese or origins. Yeah. Okay, very good. So um, what type of uh, grinding style did you start off with? Uh, just any of the traditional style blades, the Hirazakuri, the Shobuzakuri, uh, uh, just there's a lot of different blade styles that people don't realize that there are. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a plethora of them. Yeah. Many, many. So, uh, so you didn't necessarily start going into, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, try, I can't think of this uh, technique, but just grinding on one side of the blade, did you start doing that at first to get your technique down, or no. did you get right into double grinding? No, they're double ground, all, everything is flat, it's a flat grind, but if you actually threw a straight edge on it, the blades are concave. A little concave. So it rolls into an edge. You look at a Japanese blade, you don't see the edge. Right. And I've had people pick up a piece, well that's not sharp, and run a finger. Oh. How many times have you had that happen? Well, it happened yesterday, and they had to look for the emergency deal here. It wasn't me, but it was another. <laughs> I love that. I love that caveat. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, we actually we were at Chacho a few years ago, and, and we watched a guy do that at uh, one of the regular manufacturer booths. Uh, he dropped he dropped that blade on the glass table and quickly walked away with his finger in his mouth. It was kind of like, and I think we got just a snapshot of that. It was kind of unusual. I thought he was going to break the glass. So. Um, so you just jump right into it. So give us an example of some, what, what would you like to highlight? What would you like to show us here? Uh, well, I'll show you an example of, uh, most any of these are traditional as far as the temper lines and what have you. Right. This piece here has a sculpted saya, which is done in a lobster tail pattern. Uh, Man? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. This side is, is beautiful, and this is all one piece. Yeah, all hand carved. Right. Well, I, I said one piece, and I, I misspoke. It's actually two pieces bound together, but uh, you cannot see. I'm not making out the seam on this at all. This is. Uh, no, you won't on any of these. Yeah. Well, that's that that attests to uh, your level of craftsmanship. For example, on this piece, this is one that a lot of people look at, and the first thing you say, "Well, that's not a Japanese style." Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, I can't name it off the top of my head, but I've seen it. What what is that, Tyler? If you can recall. To be honest with you, right now I can't tell you off the top of my head. That's okay, because I'm I'm vapor locked, and if that makes me feel a little more comfortable, but if the maker it's, can't it's recall. It's a double exactly. grind. Yeah. And then the sayo on this piece is similar. All the sayos are done out of the same exact style of piece of wood. But then the finish is different on all of these. Right. Do you make the saya as well? Yes. Oh, wow. So you're the full-on maker. Yeah, I do the handle wrap, everything myself. Oh, wow. That way I control the quality. Right. From start to finish. Yeah. Uh, and of course, as you know, in, in the origins in Japan, they had specific categories. You would yeah. have the wrapper, you would have the saya maker, you would have the blade maker, um, and the suba maker. I mean, it would be, you know, each individual craftsman kind of... What I ran into was dependability. Ah. 
So you started uh, off, you were trying to resource that, but you had problems well, with Well, basically the, the only thing at the time I was resourcing because of where I was at, uh, Lubbock is notorious for high winds. Okay, Lubbock, Texas. Is it's not a good place to try and paint this, this type of, <laughs> of finish. Right. So I was trying another guy, but I never could depend on him to get it to me when I wanted it. Right. Uh, one piece I picked up with the very first show here in Vegas that I came to, uh, the piece I had to pick up in Albuquerque and hang in the back window of the car to dry on the way here. No kidding. That was how long you waited to get it finished. I see. And, and you had a show to make. Yeah. Yeah. So in essence, you transition into a full service shop of everything constructed in your shop yeah. because of that type of an element. About Basically, how, yes. how many years did it take you to, to have to transition into that? Or was that pretty quick? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty quick. Okay. I, uh, just because of that and the, the being able to control the quality of the pieces. If I'm not happy with the piece, then I don't think anybody else is going to be. Right. So I just I get a little picky on them sometimes, and sometimes spend way too much time on them. The Japanese pieces, and it's part of the price, is people don't realize the amount of work that's involved. In that. Once you clay a piece up and differentially heat treat it to get a temper line, at that point from then on, everything has to be done entirely by hand. Right. You can't use a buffing wheel or anything else. And these roughly go from a 60 grit finish up to the equivalent of a mirror polish by hand. Right. So you take even a small 12 inch blade, you probably go through 10, 10 to, if you were using grits of paper, probably 10 different grits. So you've polished each side of that blade 10 individual times before you get to the finish right. product. Yeah, yeah, a lot of time involved. So what are some of the price points of some of your your uh, your blades? The tactical pieces is like these, which are for everyday self-defense and carry, those start at about 495. 495, and yes. From that point, when you get up into the, the collector grade pieces, you're looking at 2,000 up to six to 10,000 on a full-size katana. On a katana? Yes. Okay. And what about your Tanto uh, range? Yeah, these, right. like I say, these will run from two, on average, two to four thousand. About two to four thousand. Man? Yeah. That wasn't the best one to pick. Okay. <laughs> well, if, if you're if you're good with it, I will be more than happy to uh, uh, take another one as well. Let's pick this one out. This is the Wakasashi, right? Which is the shorter of the the two, but this one done with a full traditional temper line. Well, that homon is beautiful. What what, uh, what style homon? Uh, this is just, I just basically kind of a random pattern. Okay. Uh, you never know exactly what you're going to come out with. Well, you know how they had names for certain. Yeah. Well, at least I in can, the traditional lines. Or I, the, uh, I can control it somewhat, but when it hits the water, sometimes you'll have a piece of clay or something come off where it wasn't supposed to, and you end up with something different than what you started with. Well, but, Don, uh, you could call that the smoke. It kind of has a smoky look yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah this, this one came out with a very active, distinctive temper line in the piece. Beautiful. And just as an example, what would the cost uh, cost be for that? Uh, that, that this blade? one is thirty-six hundred. Three thousand six hundred dollars. All all of your fittings up here are all done in solid sterling silver. Okay. And. All of the fittings are done from pieces that actually came off of old antique swords, reproduced. Okay, so you, these were cast from yes. original yeah. original uh, fittings. So any, anything you see here, you would have actually seen on an antique Japanese. Sword. Right. Okay. Well, very good. Well, Don, thank you very much. Appreciate the interview. Uh -huh. I'll uh, let you sheet it up before I sh shake your hand goodbye. You got a lot of folks that are wanting to take a closer look at your blades here. Thank you, sir. Thank you said you. you're out of Lubbock? Lubbock, Lubbock Texas. Texas. You have a safe trip home, brother.
Hey Don, this uh, this one when you heat treated it, you ended up with a little bit of a ghost. So you've got a bit of a double uh, home on there, or the heat treat. You can see it uh, about almost a quarter of an inch to a half an inch above the actual heat treat line. Yeah, it's it, a little difficult to pick it up with the lighting. This is a particular style of temper line that the Japanese do that is very precise in that each section of the blade, the edge, the middle, and the back have to be at a specific temperature to get that mirror image. Now you said this is a copy from an ancient blade from your collection, correct? Yeah. So you you uh, duplicated or attempted to duplicate the, the Haman or the temper line, correct? Uh, the temper line is not the same. You just don't get the same activity oh, okay. with the sand mai, but the blade width and okay. thickness and everything have been recreated. I see. Okay, so it's actually the, the metal or the, the steel of the blade. Was right. Recreated. Very good. What would the price be for this? This one is three thousand. Three thousand, even. Uh -huh. Very good. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh huh.